Okay, so this section covers proof for predicate logic. This will be 9.3. So the first video is going to cover UI, or universal instantiation, and EG. And then we'll move on to the next rules. So UI, right, you have your four rules. The I rules, UI and EI, they remove quantifiers. And you have your G rules, EG and UG, and they add on quantifiers. So the first two we're going to talk about have no restrictions, and we'll see kind of what that looks like in a little bit. So here's a universally quantified simple statement, right? So what might this say, right? F is our predicate, X is our variable, and it's being universally quantified. So if, F, if the predicate is, is fun, this could be everyone is fun, right? X is fun, and X is everyone. So everyone is fun. So UI basically says, well, if we know that everyone is fun, then we can infer that Abby is fun. We can infer that Bill is fun, right? It, it doesn't matter what name we put in that place or what individual constant we put in that place because if everyone's fun, then it's going to work for everybody. So that's what universal instantiation lets us do. That's what UI lets us do. It's a one-line rule, and you can do it without restrictions. So easier demonstrated than explained. Let's try a simple proof, right? The way we do UI is we take a quantifier, a universal quantifier, we chop off the quantifier and replace the variable, right, x, y, or z, with the name. So b, a, b, b, whatever we want to choose. So we actually will use that to solve proofs. So looking at this proof, right, I see that dd is my conclusion. There's dd right there. There's my universally quantified statement. So right off the bat, I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to use UI to see what I can get for that. Now, I do the same thing I did. I choose F, right? But here's the question. I can pick any lowercase letter I want to replace that Y. I could pick A. I could pick B. But it makes the most sense to pick C because I have a match. So don't just always choose A. Think about what you're doing, right? Now that I have that match one UI. Now that I have that match, I can say, okay, just through simple MP, right, two, three, MP, I can finish the proof. So the lesson here is think about what letter you're going to choose. All right, kicking it up a notch, a little bit longer of a universally quantified statement, but still just a universally quantified statement, right? So I'm going to unpack both those lines. Uh, I see that I have A in my conclusion, so I'm going to stick with that. B, A, arrow, H, A. These have to stay the same. Be the same letter, A, A, right there. 1, U, I. Now, again, when I do U, I on line 2, I could put any letter I want right there, but I'm thinking, you know what, if I can make it match, I make it match. Always really important to think about your original rules, your MP, your MT, your DS, your CD, your HS, those ones that are more obscure. Those are going to come up uh, just as much as they would on a regular test, right? Like on the second test. Tilde BA. Lines 3, 4, MT. Right? Here's a question, though, after we've done those proofs. Could we do UI on something that looks like this. Right? It starts the universal quantifier, but note, this is not a universally quantified line. This is a conditional. It's got a universal quantifier over here, and it's got a universal quantifier over here, but the main connector is the arrow. Right? The difference with this line, the main connector is the universal quantifier because everything is in parentheses. See that? So don't get confused and try to do UI on a line that looks like this. That's wrong no UI. So that's UI. Let's try our next rule, EG. So EG is the exact opposite of UI. right? If we know that, for example, Abby is fun, if we know that Abby is fun, then we can logically infer with the uh, existential generalization rule, or EG, that someone is fun, right? If Abby is fun, we know that someone is fun. So basically what it lets us do is we 
take out that individual constant and we add a quantifier over there. Now I chose to use x last time, but I can choose any variable I want. This time I choose y. All right? You can choose x, y, or z when you're doing eg. Any, any one of those is fine. So let's do some proofs again. It's a lot easier to see after we do some practice. So looking at this line right here, at first it might seem a little scary, right? Because right, I've got some existential quantifiers, but don't get confused, don't get tripped up. We still need to use these new quantifiers in our old rules, right? That's just a standard MP match right there. You can do that. Don't let the new rules throw you. That's a match, so do MP. And now that I have that, right, I can do EG to turn it into a conclusion. I can add that quantifier and pick whatever variable I want. In this case, I'm going to pick Z because that's what the that's what the conclusion says. And I replace B with a Z. And it's also a one-line rule. Uh, sorry, E G. All right, let's try some more. Looking at this line, okay, now I've got some universally quantified business in here. So I could do UI on line one. I cannot do UI to a part of a line. So I couldn't do UI to just this part. That's not allowed. You have to do UI to the whole line or not at all. So I can choose to do UI. Um, that's really the only option I have right now. Maybe I'm seeing a pattern later on. I'm just going to pick A, right? You could pick C if you want. You could pick C. You know what? Since the conclusion says C, I'm going to go ahead and pick C. It won't matter, but let's keep things consistent. So AC, line 1, UI. Well, now what? Look at that. Always be looking for your matches. Always be thinking about your matches. All right? I can change that into that. So I'll choose to use X because, again, got to make it match. So I changed line 3 into an existentially quantified statement by replacing the C with an X and adding the, universe, the existential quantifier. And because I did that, because I got the left side of line 2, now I can get a match for MP. Right, so that lets me get the right side of line 2, just like last test. And that's just from 2, 4, MP. And now that I have that, I can get the conclusion. With UI, I can choose whatever name I want, but again, I choose C because that's in the conclusion. 5 UI. So that's the two mixed together. EG is really simple. EG is taking a non-quantified statement and making it existentially quantified. No restrictions. You can do it anytime you want. UI is taking an existentially quantified statement and getting rid of the quantifier. Right? Any name you want, no restrictions. So... Let's try a problem, right? If you can, I recommend stopping the video and working this problem out on your own. See if you can do it. If you can do it, then you're good. You understand. If you can't, maybe watch the video a couple more times to get it. So looking at this, uh, here's a tip that I always think is really important. When you have a quantified conclusion like this, especially if it's existentially quantified, I always go ahead and write a little note to myself. Basically saying, if I can get that, then I can use EG to turn it into the conclusion. So that's my goal, right? Because I want to get that so I can turn it into the conclusion with EG. So I'm thinking about that. So I see that I have a universally quantified statement, a universally quantified statement, and a universally quantified statement. So there's about to be a bunch of UI going on. And I'll just do it from top to bottom. So tilde BA. Nothing changes when the tilde is introduced into the equation, right? Don't let that, don't let that throw you. It's still just standard UI. One UI. Now I'm going to do it to line two. Replacing the X's with lowercase a. Why do I choose a? Because I've already got that on line four, right? Make it match when you can make it match. So then finally line three. A, A, wedge, P, A, line 3, U, I. So now I've unpacked all my premises in a really convenient way. Now it's just basically like 
an old school proof, right? Just working it like I normally would. There's no quantifiers in these three lines. I'm just going to work it out and see if I can get an instance, right, of the conclusion. Something like this. So where do I see a match, right? Tilde AA from lines 4 and 5 MT. Not forgetting about my old rules. Line 8. Where else do I see? Well, look there. I see a match for DS. Please no one make fun of me for saying, well, looky there. And that's going to be line 6 and 7. Yeah, I'm going to hear about that. DS. Now what? I've got close, right, really close to the conclusion. I've got PA, but where in the heck am I going to get a Q? There's no Q anywhere in here. Well, that's why it's really important to study your original rules and do a bunch of practice because this is really easy if you know what you're doing, but if not, you can really complicate it by doing an unnecessary assumption or all kinds of things that you really don't need to when you can just remember good old addition, right? So it's really important to practice proofs so you don't forget about the old rules because all of a sudden the proof's going to need CD or something like that from the first test and you're so caught up thinking about all these new rules that you forgot about the old ones. So don't forget about the old ones. So now that we have, right, this, right, just like before when we did EG, right, if we were to have QA, right, then we would change that into existential X, QX, right? Well, nothing changes now that it's a longer statement. We still do the exact same process. We put the quantifier out front, open up some parentheses, and take out the A's and put some variables in. In this case, I'll choose X because that's what's in the conclusion. So I'll choose X there, and that's just 9EG. That's a pretty straightforward problem. If you can get this, if you understand that, then you got uh, this subject, no problem. If you're having a little trouble, go back, watch it a couple times, and go through it. Uh, the notes in the book are pretty good. Remember, UI and EI are really, or, sorry, UI and EG are really straightforward because there's no restrictions. You can do them whenever you want. The other two rules that we'll talk about in a second, those are a little bit more tricky, uh, only because they have some steps, some uh, hurdles to clear before you can use them. But definitely do a lot of practice on this, and it should be straightforward.